Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. As I said in my other video, I'm going to do a contest. I want to know what my tagline should be. I'm keeping it real because that's what I do. I don't know. I like that one. Give me one. The winner will be on my next rant with me. We'll do a live rant together. I'll get you on here. We'll shoot the shit. We'll have a good old time on a live rant. All right? What are your thoughts of that? Let me know. But thank you so much for the continued support of our channel. This is Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez. Show my. Let's jump right on in. Cam Ward is that dude. Give him his Heisman Trophy right now. Did you see what I saw last night? Did you see it? I was up till damn near 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time watching Cam Ward pick the Miami Hurricanes up off the mat down 35 to 10 with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Down 38-18 to start the fourth quarter and watched him woo 29 to 3 over the final 22 minutes of that game cam ward throws for 437 yards two touchdowns rushes for another miami goes 3000 miles across the, the country miami Look like complete and utter dreck for the first 38 minutes. But Cam Ward, he is that dude. Let's look at this game. As a Miami Hurricanes fan, I was sitting there saying, I'm nervous about this game because this is a cross-country flight. The game starts at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. It didn't end until after 2.30 this morning. I mean, this is Sunday right now as I'm, I have Sunday Night Football in the background. Bro, the Canes jump out 7 nothing, But the Miami Hurricanes defense needs to, needs to get its shit together. Like, for real, for real now. This is, we we got to keep it, keep it above. The Miami Hurricanes defense is not good. It is not good in a, until it seems like it has to be good. Now, Let's talk about that. They got hit for not one, not two, not three, but four 50-plus-yard plays against Cal. Miami otherwise dominated this game. People, if you pay attention, Miami had, I think it was 560 yards of offense. Let me pull it up. Where is it? Miami had 575 yards of offense. Miami had 30 first downs. Miami ran the ball for 138. Miami had the ball for 37 minutes and 35 seconds and won the game by one point. There's a few reasons for this. Big plays is number one. They gave up four huge chunk plays, which set up touchdowns for Cal. Cam Ward, beginning of the third quarter, made a horrendous decision. Throwing the ball across his body, rolling to the right, throws it across field, he airmails it, it's intercepted, and returned for a touchdown. That's what made the game 35-10 to with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. That decision was horrendous. And he actually said after the game that he did it before and it worked, that he just has to dart it in there. I would disagree with you, Cam. Throw that damn ball away. It wasn't a hard call to make. Throw it away. It was first down, no less. But he makes that call, throws it, has it picked off. It's returned for a touchdown. You're sitting here saying, Miami is down 25 points to a team that scored nine points against Florida State, who is now one in five. 
you have the quarterback for Cal, Fernando Mendoza, who is a Miami boy, went to Christopher Columbus High School. His father was teammates with, or classmates or whatever, with Mario Cristobal. So these people know each other. They're friends. And in fact, after the game, you see Mario hugging Mendoza and so forth. But Mendoza only was 11 of 22, but he threw for 285. Why? Because they were getting chung plays, 57 yards, 66 yards, 56 yards, 51 yards. They were beating Miami on screens where Miami's, I don't know what Miami's defense is doing. There was a third and 15 screen where Miami didn't even blitz and couldn't make a tackle as this kid goes for a freaking, I think it was like a 66, I think that was the 66 yarder to Jaden Ott and turns a third and 15 into a first and 10 and they're in the Miami's 30 yard line, 25 yard line. They were giving up play after play. And this is the problem with the Miami Hurricanes that remains right now. And this is why I refuse to get to that point of saying the U is back. I won't go there. I can't go there. Because I can't go there when I watch disciplined errors, coaching disasters. You Did you prepare? I don't want to hear that they had two weeks to prepare for you. Did you practice tackling? This is the same shit we saw a week ago against Virginia Tech. Undisciplined play on defense. And it's coming from the secondary and the linebackers. The secondary right now is atrocious. I mean, how many times are we going to watch? Oh, my word. All these different DBs get smoked. All these DBs miss tackles. I think I saw Jaden Harris, number seven, get beat three times for bombs. He got bombed on. I'm like, like, bro, are you? What are you doing? I mean, these types of things cannot continue to happen. And that's the one issue the Miami Hurricanes truly have. There is an, a, a lack of preparation, or a, or a com- combination of lack of preparation and lack of discipline. They overplay, they overpursue, and they get beat. If you're going to overpursue on a ball carry, you better make the god darn tackle. Because there's no one else behind you. Miami jumps out 7-0. Cal comes back, hits a big play. Hits a big play to, you know, uh do, 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 do. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Cal Jones goes back 89 yards, seven plays. Hits a big play for, what was it, 57 yards from Mendoza to Jack Endries for a touchdown. And you're sitting here like, it's 7-7. Miami gets the ball back. Miami goes for a fourth and two from midfield. And I'm sitting here saying punt the ball. It's the first quarter. It's the first quarter. What are you doing? Well, actually, it was, it was the beginning of the second quarter. What are you doing? Punt the ball. No, they go for it. They don't get it. I didn't like the play call at all. It's a good play by a defensive player, but I didn't like the play call. Run the ball. I mean, Miami ran the ball at will against this team. This is the worst rush defense team in the country. This is one of the worst rush. They rush defenses. They don't have a good run defense. Cal has a good defense, but they don't have a good run defense. Their run defense is, is susceptible. And you get stuffed for a, a pass behind the line of scrimmage that goes for a yard. And three plays later, Cal's up 14-7. After a 51-yard pass from Mendoza to Teron Grizel, and then a couple runs by Jaden Ott, touchdown. Miami does come back, make it 14-10. But again, another big play. Another big play. 66-yard to Jaden Ott, touchdown. On a fourth and one, no less. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That was the play in which Mario Cristobal decides to call timeout to get a defense set to then have them run a screen that goes for 66 fucking yards for a touchdown. 21 10. A few punts, punts back, punts back and forth. Miami's defense is not, I mean, Miami's offense is not doing anything right. They're not blocking very well when Cam Ward jumps back. And um, 
Start the second half. Cal gets the ball, and Cal, Miami punches them real quick, but Miami gets the ball back. And uh, that is when, I'm sorry, that the interception was actually made at 28-10, not 35-10. My apologies. I correct myself. That's first down. Miami has the ball in the first play of Miami's deep offensive possession on the second half was a Cam Ward interception for a touchdown. It's 28-10. Then Miami punts. And again, Cal, here we go again. Another big play, 56 yards. I'm sorry, it was the JV and Thomas. That was the that was the third and 15 play from their own 15-yard line. And then two plays later, it's touchdown. And it's 35-10 with 8.06 to go in the, in the third quarter. And that's when Miami finally decided to play some damn football. They drive down the field. I was a, ner- a little nervous with some of the the, the, length, the time. The, the thing is, the way the Cal played defense, they were really playing a good zone. So they weren't allowing stuff to get deep. Um, there was a couple of shots downfield that that, that, that that Cam Ward did miss. He had drops. There were drop balls. I mean, even Restrepo dropped the ball in this game, and Restrepo never drops balls. But, I, I, I mean, I think Horton dropped one in the end zone. Um, what's his name? George dropped one. They were dro- They had some drop balls today. I mean, yesterday. They had some drop balls. Can't have that. Miami makes it 35-18. They go for two, which ended up being the difference in the game, actually. And uh, Cal comes right back again. Now they get a field goal. Again, plays of 20, 22. Like, they're getting chunk plays on this defense because Miami's defense is not playing sound. Technique, not playing sound technique and not playing um, assignment football on defense. The way defenses get beat primarily is you don't play your assignment. If you're playing a zone, play your zone. If you're playing man, play your man. But you got to stick to your assignment, especially for zone. You have to stick to your zone. You can't overplay stuff. You just can't do it. So Miami scores makes it 35-18 uh, immediately after the field after the field goal. That makes 38-18. Now Miami's at the ball, right down the field, less than four minutes. Uh, what was it? it? Ended up being a, a touchdown pass on from Cam Ward to Isaiah Horton. Makes it 35-38-25. Now Miami's defense is starting to do some stuff. Now you need Miami's defense to show up. But this is where I think it's a little interesting. This is a combination of things. And people will look at that one particular play in the last possession um, for Cal where they're going to complain about a non uh, a non-targeting call. You're up 25. You're up 20 in the fourth. All you need to do is string together a few first downs. But this is where you find out what the problems for the Miami Hurricanes are. Big play. They are susceptible to the big play. They were susceptible to it against Virginia Tech. If Miami can clean that shit up and not get beat for big chunk plays, Miami can win the national championship. But if Miami plays a game like this against Texas, Ole Miss, LSU, 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 no, screw LSU. Texas, Ole Miss, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Tennessee. Miami will get run off the field. They cannot play defensively this way against those teams because those teams will chunk you up the ass. They will chunk you up and down the field. Cal did not score 38 points all season in a game. Cal is not known for putting up numbers. Even if you remove the pick six, 31 points on your defense. It's too much. It's too much. So Miami's defense finally figures it out. Five plays, eight yards. It did burn up three minutes. This was the one I think where they had the face mask. Yeah, Tyler Barron gets called for face mask on third and 16, which actually ate up clock. That was a gift because, I mean, he was a – I mean, Mendoza was a dead duck on that play. Just keep your arms – this goes back to technique. Miami forces a punt, scores again, 238. Cam Ward with a 20-plus yard uh, – 20-yard – was it a 24-yard touchdown run? 
And then, I mean, yeah, look at this. They got a fourth and 10 to Restrepo for 13 yards. Like this, that was, they got a fourth and six in the drive that made it 38 25. They're getting fourth down plays. They got a fourth and three. They, they converted on three fourth down possessions in those three drives. And if you want to go, I mean, heck, let me see here. Yeah, they come, they had three fourth down conversions. The fourth and ten with the Bristrepo was a monster one because it was after it was fourth and five, and we commit a false start. But Cam Ward threw for two hundred and seventy seven yards in the fourth quarter. They make it thirty eight thirty two in a. I mean, with well, how much time was left there? Four oh four. Miami still has three timeouts. And this is where I got into my little thing on Facebook where I'm just like, what is Mario Cristobal doing? Here we go again. Clock management, clock management, clock management. The first play, JV on Thomas goes for 19 yards. So now you're going to burn 40. Second down, first down from the 44, you go no game. I thought right there you call timeout. There's 315 left. You got to save clock. You got to save clock. Still, It's still what I would have done. I thought Mario played with fire here. Or I don't even know if he was thinking about what it was because I don't know what he was doing. But they run 45 seconds to 40 seconds off the clock. They snap with 238. Thomas for three yards. Now it's third down and seven from the 47-yard line. You can't even give up a field goal here because that's a problem. That would be a big problem too. They run it down to the two-minute break. So the Miami Hurricanes let – how much time? 315 to two minutes. 75 seconds, so scrap off 10 seconds for each play, five seconds for each play. You burned 65 seconds o'clock. Now, in hindsight, later on, you can sit here and say, well, you know what, because they did that, Cal didn't have the chance to really push the ball down the field in their final possession, but I'm gonna I'm going to counter that one in a second. So on third and 12, they come back on the – third and seven, they come back on the field, and they commit a false start. So it's third and 12 now. And this is the play where everyone's bitching and moaning and saying, Miami's getting gifts, the ACC's rigged, all this garbage. Mendoza breaks the pocket. He's going to get tackled. He's going down. Wesley Besaint cracks him. And this is where I will sit here and make the comment of this. I was petrified when I saw that, that they were going to call targeting. If they call targeting, the game is in large part essentially over. Because at that point, it'd be first down again with a minute 50. You got three timeouts, but you'd have to use one right there to stop it. So you might be lucky to get the ball back with a minute to go. At the same time, that would also put Cal at the 40 of Miami. A couple plays, they could be a field goal range, and then you might lose that way. But you're probably going to lose the game at that point. But if you look at the play, and I want you to be truly objective, not a Miami hater. Number one, the targeting call is a bunch of bullshit. It is weakened football. It's a bullshit call. Ejecting players for that is ridiculous. But beyond that, if you don't call it when it happened, you cannot go back and review something and say, oh, yeah, I missed it. That's targeting. No, you either call it on the field or you cannot review it. They reviewed play after play after play in this game. There's no review process that makes any sense. There's no flag drop by the sideline. It's the booth just reviews play after play after play after play. It's ridiculous. But you know what? If you watch that review, if you saw it from the one side, which is where the commentators were gaslighting it, saying, I don't know how that's not targeting. That's the rule he launched. He hit him with his helmet. They wear helmets, my guy. But when you see the reverse angle, you can see that Basaint clearly hits him with his freaking left shoulder on the shoulder. Initial comment with contact was shoulder to shoulder. And then, yes, his helmet did hit his helmet. That's not targeting. Do not make up shit. Don't make up shit. Because on top of that, if Mendoza gets right up, no one's talking about it. It's because he lays out on the ground, 
looking like he got a concussion, which I'll get to in a second even more so. He's in a concussion protocol. Or it seems like it. He runs into the tent. He got to be damn near carried off the field, goes into the tent, and now they're reviewing this damn targeting play, and here all of a sudden, he's got his helmet back on, out of the tent, ready to go on the field, thinking it's a first down because they're going to call it targeting. Look, man, I don't want to hear about it. The Miami Hurricanes had a lot of penalties yesterday. A lot of penalties. I don't want to hear that Miami was given a gift. Miami had nine penalties for 110 yards. They were not given gifts. Cal had six for 43. Do not tell me about gifts. Do I think Miss Saint should have gone lower? Yeah. Why? Because it's a tackle. Just tackle him. You don't have to light him up. That is not the time. That is, again, discipline and football IQ. That is not the time to try to light him up. One, if you're going up high, you could get called for targeting and you lose the game. But if you go midsection, you might jar that ball free. You got to be smart in that situation. All that said, that wasn't targeting. You see shoulder on shoulder. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You were up 25 points with 22 and a half minutes to go in this game. I don't want to hear that that was the call that cost Cal the game. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I've watched now two straight weeks where Miami got a call that, in my opinion, wasn't even a discuss. It wasn't even debatable. It's only debatable because the referees are blowing these things on the field. These referees can't even make calls properly. A catch where the ball is at half midfield. But, oh, he caught the ball. No, he didn't. Targeting. You didn't call it on the field. But now you want to go look at it. You want to change a game because you didn't, you didn't see something when it happened. When you watched it happen, it was not targeting. Now all of a sudden it's targeting? They missed me with the bullshit. So guess what? Guess what? It goes Miami's way. It goes Miami's way. Thankfully, there's some people with some eyes that can see the reality. But this review process in the co in college football is ridiculous. Now, let's look at the fact that Miami gets the ball back at the eight-yard line. Again, are you going to blame targeting for why you allowed Miami to go down the field 92 yards in less than 80 seconds? Miami gets the ball at the eight-yard line. The first damn play. Cam Ward finds Xavier Restrepo for a 77-yard catch to bring it to the 15. And I'm sitting here saying, hey, guys, hold the horses. We don't need to score that fast. You want to score, but we don't got to score that fast. Understand, we haven't been great defensively. And we've gotten beaten for bad plays, big plays this whole game. We lose on a field goal. And then, and then Cam Ward, okay, so guys, remember you just told us that uh, Miami was getting gifts, right? Miami's getting gifts? Yeah, gifts. Cam Ward hits Isaiah Horton with a five-yard pass from the 15 to the 10. And the two players on top of him won't get off of him. And he kicks one to get him off of him and gets hit with a freaking flag. Not only a flag, but a dead ball foul. So instead of it being second and five, it's now second and 20. And now Miami goes from the 20, the 10, to the 25. But Miami gets the gifts, right? Miami's getting the gift calls. The gift calls are coming their way. Stop it. Stop it. 15-yard penalty. Turn a second and five into a second and 20 because the players would not get off of him. They're holding him down to make the clock run. And then this is where I get into it with my opinion on certain things involving Mario Cristobal and his decision-making once again. Cam Moore then has an incomplete pass to Sam Brown. I'm pretty sure on this play, Sam Brown dropped this ball. He dropped the ball. Another drop. But now let's go look at uh, it's third down and 20. Cal calls timeout. You don't typically get beat when you're third and 20. All right, let's be real. It's, it's hard. Third and 20, Cam Ward getting pressured. He finds a way to dump it off to Damian Martinez, gets it down to the three-yard line. It's first and goal with 32 seconds left. 
Now, clock stops, and you're sitting there saying, okay, clock has stopped. And they review this play, too, to see if Cam Ward had passed the line of scrimmage. He had not. He had not. You have to have your entire body pass line of scrimmage. Half his body was on the line. His arm was well be behind the line when he threw it. Great play by Cam Ward. Great play by Damian Martinez. Miami has the ball to three. Now, Miami gets stuffed for a two-yard loss to push him back to the five with 32 seconds left. 26 seconds, actually. 20, 32 seconds. Now, this is where myself and my brain, I am trying to run this clock down. Miami's got the timeouts, right? Miami's got three timeouts here. <clears throat> you don't have to use one at the five-yard line after you got stopped. Let's get your ass back to the line of scrimmage and call play. Here's why. You don't need to give them more time. The exact play that they ran that scored, that won the game, could have still been run and you not stopped the clock. I didn't understand that. Now, it's hey, it, it, they got they 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 survived, they won. But you're at the 5. You have 3 plays from the 5-yard line. You run a play. If you run that play and you score, instead of 26 seconds, you know what the clock is looking at like right now? 12, 10, 15 at best. Because you're still going to get to the line quickly, but you're not stopping play. So Miami calls timeout with 32 seconds. Next play, touchdown pass Elijah Arroyo. Hell, I was shocked they didn't. I'm sorry, I was shocked they didn't review that play because I thought Arroyo's knee might have been down, but he dove over and it looked like it was probably simultaneous or whatever. But I was surprised they didn't review that play. They're reviewing everything else, so they, they, that makes it 39 38 after the extra point. And Miami's defense holds, does not allow, allow Mendoza to go anywhere. They didn't beat them deep. They're not, they ain't got they didn't get nothing cheap. Finally, Miami was disciplined defensively. And then at the end, uh, Magolo, Magoa intercepts him. Hell, I thought he should just run that shit back to the end zone for a touchdown. I'm not going to lie. It was five. There were five seconds left. I'd have run that thing back to. This is where I'm going to be. My, I'm going to be that. He's better than me because I, I would have run that thing back to the end zone and scored because he just scored easily. And then Miami would have been one that came 46 to 38. But he goes down, and then they call a personal foul on Miami for taunting or whatever hell they want to call. And Miami wins. Cam Ward is that dude, though. Cam Ward is that dude. Don't tell me about Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is amazing. Travis Hunter is the best player in college football. The Iceman Trophy is not for the best player in college football. They can say what they want. They can say whatever they want. It's not for the best player in college football. Let's, let's read the definition of Heisman Trophy. <clears throat> it is considered the most prestigious award presented. It's, it's okay, okay. Awarded annually since 1935 to the top player in college football, not the best player. There's a difference. Most prestigious award. Do you think Jaden Daniels last year was the best player in college football? I don't know. If, do you think he was? There are plenty of years. In fact, I'd say most years. The guy who people think is the actual best player in college football is not the winner of the Heisman. Because the word best is subjective as hell. Because typically a team that a player that wins a Heisman usually wins it playing for one of the best teams in the country. In the case of Jaden Daniels last year, his numbers were so off the chart good, not good, great. It was hard to not give a guy who went nine and three in the SEC, two for 3,800 yards, 40 touchdowns, and four picks, and had a 208 QB rating while rushing for 1134 and 10 more touchdowns to not give that man that award. He earned that award. He deserved that. He earned and deserved. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if he was the best player in the country last year. The best. I mean, at the top. The, the top. I'm sorry. 
the top player. I don't know if he was, he was the top player. I don't know if he was the best player. Travis Hunter is the best player in college football. Cam Ward is the top player right now. I do believe if you remove Travis Hunter from the Colorado Buffaloes, they're 0-5. I also believe that if you remove Cam Ward from the Miami Hurricanes, they're probably 2-4, and four, potentially. Is Miami beating the Gators in Gainesville with Emory Williams at quarterback? I, I, I don't know. I doubt it. Is Miami beating – Miami's beating FAMU. Miami's beating Ball State. Who was the other game that Miami played? USF. Is Miami beating USF without Cam Ward? Miami was losing 15-14 in that game right before halftime. I don't know that Miami beats USF without Cam Ward. Cam Ward is incredible. This guy, the stuff he does is otherworldly. And he's cool and he's calm. Sometimes too cool for me. But this dude is a bad motherfucker. He is the BMF. 2,219 yards passing. He leads the country right now. 20 touchdowns leads the country right now. 10.4 yards per attempt. I, I mean, uh, leads the conference. 11.9 yards per, I guess, uh, average yards per Leads the conference, 15.0 yards, I guess, per catch. Leads the conference, 369.8 yards per game. Leads the country, 182 QB rating. Leads the conference. This kid is incredible, and he's smooth, and he's accurate. I mean, he had probably five drop balls in this game. Five. If, from just of what, just of what, I, what I remember. You're giving a guy with his ability – Surrounded by the talent. And that's the problem. My, when everyone says that Miami's had no talent, I don't believe that. That's my biggest problem with what people have been saying about Miami for so many years. Miami's got no talent. Bullshit. Miami's got talent. Miami hasn't had a quarterback. Quarterbacks change college football teams. Flat out. So when you talk about talent, Miami's recruited top 15 classes for 17, 18 straight years. Miami's lost to teams that have one-star athletes. Go look at Miami's roster last year. Loaded with talent. Why do you think Colby Young is at Georgia? You think Colby Young isn't talented? Miami's had two wide receivers go to Georgia in the last decade, transferring there. You think Georgia is a bad evaluating program when it comes to talent? If you remember, Colby Young was probably Miami's best wide receiver two years ago. And then last year, he didn't he didn't have that same type of uh, year, and he and he dips. Colby mm-hmm. Young. Two years ago was 47 catches. I mean, I mean, he was 32 catches for 367 two years ago. Last year goes for 47 for 563, but he expected to be a lot more. Expected to be a lot better. Restrepo's Miami's best target. Still is. Jordan, Colby Young's at Georgia. Like, bro, he ain't gonna he probably won't have the numbers he had at Miami, even last year. But you think Georgia doesn't have a is not a good a good program for evaluation of talent? Kobe Young's a ball player. <clears throat> Isaiah Horton, he's in his third year at Miami. Isaiah Horton, bro. <sighs> Isaiah Horton, I don't know where to, uh, I don't know what they did with this dude in the offseason. But this is one of those things where you talk about stuff called development. And this guy might, but there's a combination of it. You have to have the want to. Isaiah Horton has the want to because last year he had 13 catches for 168. He's got 31 catches for 395 already. And he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Absolute flipping beast. Xavier Restrepo last year balls out. 
Xavier Restrepo might go down as Miami's most prolific wide receiver in history. I don't think he's the best. But numbers-wise, this dude had 85 catches last year. He's got 32 right now for 585, 18.3 per catch. His connection with Cam Ward is crazy good. Now, I don't know if he'll catch 85 passes this year because Cam Ward spreads the wealth really, really well. And also the fact that we had, I think, three games in which Restrepo probably wasn't even on the field the second half of the game because they were up by so much. I mean, he was against Florida, but against FAMU and against Ball State, even against even against South Florida, he probably didn't play much of the fourth quarter, I'm guessing, if I recall properly. I mean, he didn't need to. They were up, they were up three touchdowns. But Restrepo has the best hands in the country of any – I mean, the fact that he dropped – and that ball that I'm saying he dropped was probably a – it was a very, very difficult catch. But I bet you if you asked Xavier Restrepo, should he have caught that ball, he'll say absolutely. He would absolutely say that he should have caught that ball. The ball was up here. He was going a little bit off direction. But he would have told you he should have caught that ball. And the next play, ball went right back to him. He's he's a beast. Absolute beast. Xavier Restrepo is going to play 15 years in the NFL. No, no bullshit. He's going to be Wes Welker. He's going to be an absolute savage in the NFL. Miami's loaded that talent with talent. What will change my what will make what will, what will make Miami a national champion is discipline and coaching. The coaches have to improve, and they don't need to be fired or replaced. You get better by doing, but you've got to get better with these with, with preparation. The preparation defensively is not where it needs to be. 34 to Virginia Tech, nearly losing that game at the end. 38 to Cal, the big plays. If you look over the last two weeks, over the last – Miami was like one of the top teams in the country in terms of giving plays up that were under 20 yards over 20 yards, like one of the top and not giving those up. In the last two weeks, they get a four in one game. That's ridiculous. That's not – it's unacceptable. They gave up a 55-yard run, and they gave up one, two, three, four, five more 20-plus-yard chunk plays. That's a lot of chunk – that's chunk yardage. And Vodtech isn't some world-beating offense. So, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable win. Biggest comeback of the year in college football, 25 points down. You go into a bye week, excited. You got to go play at Louisville in, a, in two weeks. And then after that, you're going to get Florida State. At home, and I mean, I think Miami's in a mollywop Florida State. But again, rivalry, you never know. I think Miami beat my I think Miami would should beat FSU by four touchdowns, at least. At least. But Cam Ward is that guy. You can hand him the high spin right now. If he continues to do what he's doing, there's not a, there's not even a question. I told I told Nick a couple weeks back, I said if if the Miami Hurricanes go 13 and 0. First of all, 12 and 0. 13 and 0, because that's the that's the conference title game. If they're 13 and 0, Cam Ward's the Heisman Trophy winner. It's not even a question. But if they're 13 and 0, the Miami Hurricanes are going to be ranked number one in the country. You can look at their schedule. You can say whatever you want. Bama lost. Georgia lost. Texas is going to lose. If everybody else loses, Miami will be ranked number one because I don't think any SEC team is going to be undefeated. And I do believe that even if Oregon was to go undefeated, I think Miami would be ranked ahead of my, I think Miami would be ahead, ranked ahead of Oregon. I even I, Ohio State. I even think if Miami's undefeated and Ohio State's undefeated, I think Miami's ranked ahead of Ohio State. It's my belief. That maybe that's the homer in me, but. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What are your thoughts about Cam Ward? What are your thoughts about the defense, about the coaching, about the timeout decisions? All those different things I talked about. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear more of what you guys say because we are growing this football stuff. College football is my thing. I love 
college football. NFL, not so much. College football is where I'm at. Nick will handle the NFL stuff. Any thoughts in the comments? Like, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.